Here's a statement. Xavier Wheeler is a top three point guard in college basketball. Is that a true statement? Yeah, it's false because I'm a little higher than that, but that's true. <laughs> <laughs>
What did you learn individually and what do you think the guys that are returning learn collectively that you think can help impact this season and help you guys go further in the NCAA tournament? Yeah, I think just the experience um, aspect, you know, coach was asking like who, when we were about to go to the tournament last year, he was asking, you know, who played in the NCAA game? There's only two guys played and they didn't win their game. Um, so just that pure experience of what it takes um, you know, to get there and, and what it's like when you do get there, because it's a different, it's a completely different game. Um, you know, taking that experience and just having that, that edge, because, you know, we were a favorite for a lot of people and for us to lose first round, uh, you know, let's just, let, let the sour taste in not only our mouths, but all of our fans and um, people that support us. So um, we're definitely coming back with a chip on our shoulder. Um, and we're definitely looking, looking to make that national championship run. I heard a, a segment of an interview that C.J. Fredericks did, and he said that you, uh, Jacob Toppins, and himself were the three vocal leaders of the, of the team. Yeah. What do you think your role is on this year's team? Yeah, I think it's that. Um, being a vocal leader, um, not only to my teammates, but you know, to my coaches as well. You know, I got to hold them accountable because they want to hold us. Someone got to hold them accountable. <laughs> So uh, definitely that, and you know, just playing with pace, uh, mature pace, not just playing at 100, you know, 100, you know, gear, you know, full throttle, but having to be able to switch pace, yeah, identify mismatches for my team, um, be able to set the point of attack on the defensive end, and ultimately just create easy opportunities um, for us to score, you know, if, if it need be, for me to take over and, and you know, create opportunities for myself. That's good. Speaking of pace, you guys get off to an exciting pace with your schedule. You guys have Gonzaga, Louisville, Kansas, Michigan, Michigan State, UCLA. Talk to us about that schedule and, and how excited you are to play I mean, teams at that, at that level. That's why I came. That's why I decided. You know, that's a big reason why I came to Kentucky is part of that. Um, you know, scheduling, playing against the best, competing with the best every day in practice. Um, you know, we got a taste of that last year, you know, playing Carolina. Um, you know, playing Duke, playing Kansas, and uh, for us to kind of repeat that, not those same teams, but that same level of, of talent, that same level of um, intensity in those games is going to be big time. And for us to do it on big stages, like be able to go to, you know, London to play Michigan. That's big time. Go, That's to, big time. go back to Madison Square Garden to play UCLA. You know, Kansas is going to want their, their lick back after, you know, the... The smacking we gave them in Allen. I was, I was at that game. I was at that smacking. So dudes are gonna, they, you know, it's gonna be, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. And I love, I love competition. I love playing against the best. And typically, that's when I play the best. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that Kansas game because yeah. I know they're gonna come back and, and, be, and be ready to compete. So we've talked about a number of different players, but one of the guys that we have not really talked about yet, who's one of the biggest stars in college basketball, is Oscar Sheway. Yeah. Talk about Oscar, his impact on the team, and and just him as a teammate in general. Yeah. I mean, Oscar is one of the most genuine people I've ever, I've ever been around. Like, he's literally willing to give you the clothes off his back to make sure that, you, I mean, you're good. I can see that. Yeah, and that, that's just how he is. Um, sometimes it's like, all right, Oscar, like, enough with it. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's go ahead and go. Like, when we're taking pictures or signing autographs, like, yo, we got practice. Like, no, I have to sign every single one. It's like, yo, we got practice. It's time like, to go. It's, it's time to go. But that's just how he is. And, um, you know, that stuff is carried into, you know, to the game where he's selfless. You know, it's not always about him scoring or him. Only thing he's selfish about is rebounds. He doesn't share those. He, does, he doesn't share those. But and that's good for us. But, um, I mean, he's su super hard worker. He's kind. Um, and he's always putting others first, for sure. Every time I hear Oscar speak, he finds a way to segue into his relationship with Coach Cal and what Cal has done to impact his life. Talk to, talk to me a little bit about Coach Cal. Um, him as a coach, but more importantly, how he's helped you and how he's impacted your game. Yeah, Coach Cal is my guy. Um, I think we're at the point, where, point now where, you know, we make little jokes with each other and not, no one else knows what it means or, you know, I can kind of finish his sentences. I already know what he's going to say. And um, even on the court, we kind of have the same ideas. Like, you know, mm -hmm. he'll ask me, hey, what do you think of this? You think that will work or what would you do different? And then for you to have that type of relationship with your with your head coach is big time. And not only with just any head coach, but a Hall of Fame coach like Coach Cal. Um, and he's empowered me. He's empowered me to get better. He's empowered me to, to show it, too. Not just like, yo, you got to work on this, but yo, you've worked on this. Like, I've seen it. Go do it. Mm -hmm. And um, to have a coach like that, and, you know, who has your back no matter what, um, is, is, is not a lot of people get to have that. And I'm super blessed to have that with him. That, that's big time. And Cal always talks about Kentucky and how it's such a special place. Yeah. And I remember, when you transferred to Kentucky, um, it might have been three weeks in, and you guys were doing some preseason stuff. And I remember asking you, 
And how was the experience there? Yeah. And these are my words, not yours. You were like, yo, this shit is elite. Yeah. Yeah. Like, talk to me about Kentucky and what makes that place a special place. It's, it's, I mean, it's hard to describe. It's hard to describe. <laughs> it's hard to describe. Those people live, drink blue, live by the blue, blue and white. I mean, those people literally will die, die for Kentucky. Um, Kentucky basketball, they know you, they know your story. Um, they want to be a part of it. Sometimes it can be overbearing, but that just shows you the amount of support that they have for you. Um, you know, sometimes people not not be able to handle that, you know, just because of the high expectation of it. It's like if you fail, it's like, yo, you didn't meet the bar. Yeah. But it's like when you when you meet the bar, when you do something good, it's like, yo, you're on top of the world. You're literally the rock stars. So uh, it's, it's crazy. Um, and just, you know, not just from a fan and, and, and um, you know, like a spectator aspect, but not just you know, only from like a resource aspect, just the amount of people you come into contact with, like, you know, um, scouts or, you know, different type of doctors who are willing just to help you just because you're affiliated with the brand. Kentucky basketball. And it, it's, it's been amazing. It's been, a, it's been a great journey so far, and I can't wait to continue to see what else that it has in store for me. And I, I know it's special from a basketball standpoint, but off the court, Recently here with the tragedy with the Eastern Kentucky floods, yeah. um, Kentucky men's basketball helped to raise almost $3 million to help support those who have been affected yeah. by the flooding. Talk to me about that and what that meant for you um, individually and, and also collectively as, as a yeah, men's basketball I, that, that stuff hit you know, home a little bit more than um, others did. And just because of the fact that I was kind of in that same situation where I lost a lot of my stuff in Hurricane with, Harvey. With Harvey, I remember that. Yep. Um, you know, I wasn't, you know, without a home or without clothes, but I definitely came back to my house where, you know, everything's underwater, things are not there, pictures aren't there, um, your car's flipped up upside down, the house is, you know, listed as uninhabitable. So just So seeing, that touched you directly. That touched me directly. Yeah. So, you know, being able to you know, help the Red Cross be on the phone and like, you know, people be able to recognize me. Hey, I'm Savir, I'm helping with it. Would you like to donate? I'm like, man, this is Savir, really? this is really, this is Savir. Mm -hmm. Man, this is, this is awesome, this made my Time day. Time to write a check. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, just to see how that, I mean, just a simple conversation, ask them, are they okay? Would you like to donate? How can I help? Really touch people's heart and that, you know, that, that hit home for me for sure. And I, I know that, you know, the, um, the attention that you guys brought to that situation, but more importantly, the money that you guys raised, I know yeah. that it impacted the lives of, of people there. That um, spirit of being giving and, and, and servantship, um, does that come from being the oldest of six in your family? Definitely. Yeah, it definitely does. Because even if you want to share or not, you always end up sharing. <laughs> you're going to take it or you're just going to be, like, be annoyed with them and end up sharing. But, you know, once you get of age, it becomes second nature. It's like, man, why not? You know, why not share? Because it's always going to come back to you. And uh, two times the blessing, so uh, that's definitely been a been a been a thing I've always been done since I was a little kid. But Coach Cal is big on that too, serving leadership, giving back, because Coach Cal, had, his parents, you know, they worked in the cafeteria, mm -hmm. you know. So anytime we're out, um, you know, we're at a hotel and people gives us food, he'll give us money. Like, yo, go, go bless somebody else's day. So uh, he's big on serving leadership and giving back. So that's just part of our, our culture as a team and, and how we are at Kentucky. That's, that's big time. Speaking of leadership, your dad has played a significant role in, in your life um, and has impacted you both on and off the court. Talk a little bit about your, about your father, Teddy Wheeler, and, and how he's impacted you. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if I would be Savir without, without, without my dad um, and my mom. I mean, just starting from my name, you ask me who I am, Savir Wheeler, that comes from them. His original name, a name created by them. Um, but just how he works, how he moves in a day to day life is, if I could be half of that, I think I'd be a pretty dope dad or a pretty dope person. So, uh, man, I mean, his impact is, you know, beyond words. Um, I get, you know, just every little mannerism, every little habit, the way I sound, the way I talk, no it all stems, <laughs> uh, stems from him. So, uh, I mean, he's been, he's been a tremendous blessing. Um, couldn't ask for a better dad. Shout out Teddy Willer. Shout out, definitely shout out my dad. <laughs> and you have a, a younger brother, Montana Willer, yeah. who starting to get some buzz um, in the basketball, grassroots basketball space. Um, talk to me a little bit about Montana Willer, how you see him as a player, and does he have a chance to be as good as Big Brother? Yeah, he definitely has a, has a chance to be as, um, as good as me. Um, I think some of the things that, that, you know, make me stand out is some of the stuff I tell him he needs to work on. Well, you know, that's, you know, the intangibles, like getting people to want to play with you. Mm -hmm. um, like, 
when you're on the court, people want to have fun. Like when I'm playing, I know all my teammates have fun playing because they know they're going to get a chance to rock out. Mm -hmm. We're going to play that's fast. Important. We're going to make it exciting. And um, that's the next step for him. But right now, as far as skill, I mean, he got a chance. He got a chance to be better than he got big, a chance big, to be big, better. big bro. Yeah, yeah, he got a chance. All right, college coaches, you heard it. Sabir <laughs> Wheeler says his little brother has a chance to be just as good or better. You better get to recruit Some of them him. know it. Yeah. Some of them know it. It's, I mean, it's, it's looking forward to seeing his progress and you know how that stuff shapes out for him. As the season approaches, some of the national media outlets will start releasing preseason All-American teams. Should you be on that team? Yeah. You see yourself as All-American? Yeah, I definitely do. Um, I think, to be honest, I think I had a really good chance of, you know, winning it with Bob Cousy last year. If we didn't, you know, we didn't lose in the first round and some of the injuries that I know I had, you know, didn't you know, happen at the time that they did. But I, I definitely see myself as a preseason All-American kind of guy. Here's a statement. Xavier Wheeler is a top three point guard in college basketball. Is that a true statement? Yeah, it's false because I'm a little higher than that, but that's true. <laughs> <laughs> what makes you a top three point guard in college basketball? Um, the way I affect the game on both ends of the court. Um, I can get, you know, my pace, the way I play the game is, 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 is with incredible pace and maturity. Uh, you know, I can get guys involved. I make others better. I make my coach's life easier, make my teammates' life easier. I win games, and um, that's just on the offensive end, not to talk about how I am on the defensive end, be able to disrupt your other team's whole flow, your whole game plan. The, your, all your momentum can get messed up messing around with me. Um, <laughs> but also just as a, on, a, on a coaching level, being able to impact the locker room, be able to be That's the coach on the court and in timeouts, be able to get my guys you know, huddled up. And when we face adversity, be like, man, we're good. We're mm -hmm. good. I remember a game at A&M, they, they jumped on us. You know, but you know, we're good. That was a big time game. Big time I, was, game. I was at that game. They they had y'all on the ropes that game. They thought too. they did. <laughs> we let them have. We let them think that. But uh, that 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 makes me one of the best, the best point guard in the country for sure. I know you're a competitive guy. Tell me one or two guys in college basketball. It doesn't have to be a guard. Who you like their game? When you watch them play, you say, "Yo, he he got game." Ah, uh, man. Let's see. I like Drew Timmy. Drew Timmy is a beast. I like Drew Timmy. What's up, Drew Timmy? I like Drew Timmy. Uh, it's full work. I mean, he's going to be a great, you know, I ain't going to like him when we play Gonzaga. <laughs> and he'll be on, he'll be on the first team All-American. He will be. He will be. Rightfully so. Rightfully With Oscar. So. Yeah, Oscar. Um, that's going to be a great matchup when we play them at Gonzaga in Spokane. Spokane. And another one, I don't know. But Who definitely else? Drew Timmy. Definitely Drew Timmy. Um, trying to think of anybody in our conference or nah. That's enough. We'll, That's we'll, enough. we'll start with the first team. Really we'll out. start with. A, I know you don't yeah, give out a lot of props. Yeah, we'll yeah. start with the first team All American, Drew Timmy. Yeah. <laughs> this summer, I know you've put in a lot of work. Um, what things specifically have you worked on this summer, and what things have you added to your game that you think will help you going forward? Yeah, I think um, the biggest thing is going to be, like I said, playing with pace, but it's almost like a maturity to it. Using my speed, knowing I'm the fastest guy, but using my speed in spurts and bursts, um, changing pace, getting by my guy, and then slowing down to see what's, what's the next read, making the pre-reads, and um, implementing in-between stuff, like the floaters. Like, I don't have to always go in there crashing into bigs. Um, and sometimes the easiest shot, the easiest play is just the floater. Because with a team like us who can rebound, if I miss it, you got Oscar, Oscar down there, you got Damian down there. Yep. So that's the best shot for us. Um, and just being more efficient, you know, from a statistical standpoint, you know, from a three-point percentage, a field goal percentage, a free throw percentage, just a turnover, just being more consistent as a player. I talked to you already about the team ceiling, but what is your ceiling individually? What's, what's Savier's Wheeler's ceiling this year and beyond? Personally, I think I can be a first team you know, all-American type of guard. Um, and, you know, that's going to be predicated on performance, wins, and um, how we do as a team. And obviously, you got a lot of individual stuff, but I, I think I can do that. Um, you know, following, I think we could be a national championship Final Four run team. And I think as long as we win and I'm a point guard, you know, that stuff is going to take care of itself. Because ultimately, a point guard is judged by how they impact winning and, and they do you win games. Um, and, you know, following that in the league, I think I can be. I can be that guy. I can be Isaiah Thomas. The only thing I think makes me different than Isaiah Thomas, I think I give my teammates 
the ball a little better. He might score. He can really score. He can really score. He can really score. But I can really get my teammates involved. Um, that's a gift of mine. My speed, my playmaking, and my passing um, are three things I think that can translate to the next level. That's good. So I look forward to seeing you have a great year this year and then being able to, to transition and do some of the same things at the next level. Um, one of the things that when you talk to players about the process of training and playing college basketball and winning games and practice, um, I think 2020 showed us that sometimes it becomes overwhelming and it becomes too much for guys. Um, just the, the, the rigors of, of the regiment. Yeah. Um, and mental health has become a, a, you know, a phrase that people have really started to look at, especially for athletes, mm -hmm. and especially in the black community where you know, you're raised to be tough and macho. Mm -hmm. um, talk to me a little bit about your thoughts on mental health. Is that something that you've had to, to be aware of or the, or the battle? And if, if so, how have you overcome some of those the mental health challenges? Yeah, uh, it's a big deal, and um, rightfully so. Because you can't, you can't compete, you can't, you can't do anything if you're not in the right state of mind. Um, and definitely, you know, you're aware of it. I'm aware of it. I even have a wellness coach myself um, that I check in with weekly. That's big time. Um, you know, and I know Coach Cow is, is the same way. Like he's been looking to see if he can get somebody that could come with us on staff to different games and making sure everyone's okay. But um, me personally, I have, I have one. You know, I think it's, it's well worth any price. And if you can do it, you should do it. Um, Cause at the end of the day, it's like you gotta have someone to talk to. Um, you know, whether it's not like a big thing or if it's a little thing, just someone to, to air it out. Yeah. And and, and give you a non-biased opinion. Mm -hmm. They're not gonna say anything just because your family. Oh no, you're, you're right. Or no, mm -hmm. you're wrong. Like just to give you a straight up answer. They know they care about you and build that relationship. It's like man, like that person really helped me. And I think um, you know it's big time. If you can do it, I. 15 out of 10 recommend it. And sometimes it's just somebody to listen. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That, yeah. that, that, can, that can relate to, to, to what you're going through. Yeah. That's, that's big time. One of the biggest things that I think is important for, for athletes, again, because of the systematic schedule of waking up, yeah. eating, training, lifting, running, yeah. practice, is to have a hobby outside of basketball. Something yeah. that has nothing to do with basketball, something that gives you peace, something that you can just kick back and get your mind off of it until it's time to get back to it. Do you have a hobby or, or is it something that you're thinking about, you know, kind of kind of picking up a hobby? Yeah, uh, I used to be a big reader. I was a bookworm back in, you know, high school, elementary school, middle school even. And um, I got away from it when I got back to college. Um, I got to college, so this past six months or so, I started getting back into that, reading books, going to the library. And even now, you can just check out a book on your phone. Yep. You have different e apps. E-books, yep. yep. So I've been doing that, and I, I video game. Oh, you're a video game guy. Yeah, I, I game. OD? I, yeah, OD. <laughs> I go live with my, uh, on my Instagram and I let, you know, Kentucky fans play with me, play with my brother. Um, so yeah, that, that's what I do. And I'm competitive. I'm competitive. Of, I of, win. Of, of, co I of win. course you are. I win. One of the other things that people like to do to kind of get their mind off basketball is listen to music. Right? Yeah. Are you, a, are you a big music guy? I am a big music guy. Um, I listen to all kinds of music. What's playing in your car right now? If I got in your car and turned the radio on, all this, uh, what's, what's on? Adele. That's Adele. The, that's the first time I was listening to on the way over. That, here. that ain't bad. Yeah. No, I, I, I like I like Adele. Pre-game, what's in your headphones when you warm it up? I watch ready movies. For I watch movies. You watch movies, movies for pre-game? Yeah. I watch movies. Like what? Game. What's your What's your favorite movie? Um, my favorite movie is all time. I don't know. That'd be the Batman trilogy with uh, Christian Bale, and, uh, Christopher Nolan, those guys. Uh, my favorite movie is the one with the Joker with Heath Ledger. That's your favorite movie. That's of my all favorite time. movie of all time. My favorite movie. Of all favorite time. rapper. Favorite rapper all time, Pop Smoke. Pop Smoke? R.I.P. the Wu. That's who, that's who you're going with? I'm going to give you another Wu. chance. Favorite rapper? Favorite rapper? Future then. Future. Okay, we'll go with, we'll go with Future. Future. Toxic go. King. <laughs> Hoop sneakers. Yeah. I got you a big shoe guy? Yeah. What's your favorite on-court shoe? Kobe. Kobe, which ones? All of them. I have like seven, eight pairs now. You a Kobe guy? And I'm a Kobe guy. I've always been a Kobe guy. But then when he passed, you know, them joints got expensive. Yeah. But uh, NIL kind of helped, kind of helped with that. <laughs> <laughs> Pockets a little fatter. Huh? Yeah, so I ain't. Off court, what do you like to wear? What shoe? Um, I wear Uggs a lot. Okay. You see me in Ugg slides, you see me in Dunks, um, Yeezy slides, Yeezys. Yeah, I mean, I'm into all that. Yeah. You mentioned NIL and it's, and it's drastically changed the college basketball landscape. And I know Kentucky's a big brand and, yeah. it, and it gives you opportunity for a lot of, you know, 
um, to be connected with brands. What's your, ta what's your take on NIL and how has it impacted you individually? Yeah, I mean, NIL, you know, obviously as a student athlete, is big. Because to me, when I was always thinking about it, I was like, man, you can be in college and, have a, and be a YouTuber and make thousands of dollars. No question. Well, why can't we do it just because, you know, we just we just took our sport a little more serious. Yeah. And then for the NCAA to kind of, you know, recognize that and allow us to, you know, make money of our name, image, and likeness was big time. I know it's it's helped me. Um, you know, it's, it's helped plenty of others on my team. I know it's helped thousands of other athletes across the country. And I think it's given people, like, an extra um, option to look at to where it's not such a rush to feel like you have to go professional. I think that's, 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 that's one of the huge advantages yeah. that people can come back and yeah. wait for the right opportunity yeah. to go pro. Just and because. you can kind of weigh out, man. You know, you're not going to go pro without knowing your numbers. Yeah. So if you know your numbers, if you decide to go pro and you look at your numbers, what you could possibly make in NIL, what uh, everything's still paid for, mm -hmm. getting the best resources, you know, still getting another year of education. Um, it's like, man, we got, we got to look at that. Or am I going to, you know, take the money now and like, I have to live a grown, like I'm on my own now, a yeah. real, real grown up lifestyle. So NIL has definitely helped with that. And um, it kind of, you know, there's no limit right now. Like you kind of get into what you want, what you like, mm -hmm. um, you know, what your lifestyle is, is the kind of people you kind of attract. So uh, it's, it's been great for sure. You're at Kentucky, big brand. You're one of the biggest stars in college basketball. What brands out there that you would love to partner with from an NIL standpoint? The only brand right now that comes to mind is Pringles. 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 Xavier Willis looking for the partnership. I'm looking for it, Pringles. Why Pringles? Yeah, like every time my mom goes to the, you can ask, you can call it right now, guys, anybody in my family. If I, my mom goes to the store, she's like, what do you want? Two cans of Pringles. And I've been like that for like the last two years now. I need it. Xavier Wheeler, partnering with Pringles. Pringles. It's coming soon. Yeah. All right, last thing. I get a chance to speak to a lot of parents and players in the grassroots space to talk about the process of transitioning from a high school basketball player and ultimately becoming a college basketball player. You've gone through that process. What advice would you give a high school athlete who wants to be Savio Wheeler or who wants to be a guy who can play at the next level? Maybe not Kentucky, but to have an opportunity to get a free education and, and to play the, the game that they love beyond yeah. high school. I think the biggest thing is, is finding two things that can get you on the court um, the fastest. Um, so sometimes for guys who are athletic, it's rebounding. Mm -hmm. Yo, coaches will go crazy for a guy who rebounds. Because rebounding, that means you finish in possessions. You get in extra possessions for your team. You know, you, you, you're active. That means you're involved in the action. You're boxing out. You're, you're jumping. You're using your athleticism to the game. Whether if it's, if it's passing, be the best passer. Be a guy who can make everybody better and not turn the ball over. Like, I had to learn that coming to Kentucky. It's like, yo, you can make all them plays, but you better stop turning the ball over. <laughs> so if you're, if you're a great passer, do that. If you're a guy who thinks, man, I can score, well, you got to do it efficiently. You, in high school, you can get away with taking 25 shots and getting 25 points. Now, nah, in college, everything is, is tracked. How many shots you take a day, what you're making, um, the scrimmages, you went two for seven in the scrimmage. So should you really be shooting? Mm -hmm. And if you, so that you got to find two or three things that, that, that you know that you can take with you at any level and it, and it won't change and stick to that. And if you're a guy who's a defensive guy, you got to be able to guard the ball. You got to be able to switch. You got to be able to you know, finish the play with a rebound. You got to be able to hold your opponent under 40% field goal percentage. Like there's things that you can easily find out. It's not just yeah. me or you can just, just look and watch the game that if I can do these two things, I know I'm going to get on you the can court. Get on the court. On that. That's great advice from, from Savia Willa. I appreciate you taking the time to talk to us. Looking appreciate forward it. to watching you play this year. Have an All-American year. And then looking forward to watching you play at the, at the next level. Appreciate it. Savia Willa, guys. Thanks for joining us. Hey, YouTube. Rossi Karen here. Thanks for tuning in. I truly appreciate your support, and I hope that you found this content both entertaining and informative. Please remember to like and share this video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to this channel to stay in the loop with all of our exclusive content, plus behind the scenes footage from the sports and entertainment industry. Thanks again, and I hope to see you guys soon.